What is going on guys, it is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide back here with another video tutorial and today I'll be showing you how to edit footage and how to upload it from your PlayStation 4 to YouTube or any online streaming service. Now in case you weren't familiar with it, the application I'll be using in today's video is called the Share Factory application. Now this is a free application that comes uh, with your PlayStation 4 uh, upon purchase. Uh, you can usually just find it on the home screen or uh, in your library. And if you deleted it or it got lost or whatever, uh, just search it on the store and you will be able to download it for free. So we will head right into the application. And the first screen you'll see is the main menu screen here. And as you can see, there are a lot of different options uh, to choose from on the main menu we can uh, edit photos we can make animated gifs we can upload our stuff to social media we can uh, import content and all that fun stuff but in today's video i will mainly be focusing on the top tab here the video tab so we will head in here and create a new project now the first screen we'll see in the new project tab is this choose theme screen here uh, now this is kind of a weird aspect of the share factory uh, for some reason PlayStation requires us to basically put an ad for one of their games or their console in front of our gameplay Luckily we can get rid of it on the next screen, but in order to get there we have to choose a theme So I'll just choose this one here and it'll take us to the choose clips screen where we can now get rid of the theme If we want to of course if you want to keep it just don't deselect it like I just did and then also on this screen We can scroll down and look at the uh, gameplay footage that we have recorded if you do not know how to record gameplay footage then uh, be sure to watch my previous video on this subject link will be down in the description below or in the top right corner so i'll just choose this piece of footage right here and these two and you will notice on the left side it shows us how many clips we can choose and the length of the clips we can choose so essentially we need to make sure that our videos do not go over the hour and 20 minute mark uh, otherwise i uh, won't be able to save this so now that i've chosen my footage i will press square to start a project uh now it'll give me the option to rename it, it'll default to the name of the theme I chose. Uh, I'll just keep the name because I don't really care. And once the footage has loaded, you will see the main editing screen here. We have our footage on the timeline here. We can scroll back and forth using the R stick or the touchpad in the middle of the uh, DualShock 4 controller. So the first thing I'm going to do to this footage, and the first thing most likely most of you will do to this footage, is I'm going to crop it down to a more reasonable length. Uh, and to do that, I will head into this uh, little wrench settings menu here by pressing square, and you will see the split clip, trim clip, move clip, delete clip, uh, and clone clip options. So these are all pretty self-explanatory. If you've ever edited a clip before uh, on any sort of editing software, uh, you'll know the basics on uh, how to do all this. But in case you are not familiar or are just uh, rusty on how to do this sort of thing, I will show you really quickly how to do this. So in the split clip, we just move our cursor to any particular point in the video, uh, and you press X to split that clip into two separate pieces. And there we go, we have two um, separate clips. Now this will come in handy later when we want to add effects to certain parts of the video, like speeding it up or, uh, I don't know, adding a filter or whatever, just adding it to a particular part of the video and not the whole thing. Uh, of course, it's also useful for just cutting certain parts out of the video, so I will edit this footage down to my liking here. Of course, it's also useful for editing particular parts out, and you can do that by selecting another part of the clip, splitting it again. So now we have three pieces, and this middle clip here I do not want because I'm doing something I don't like. So I will press the square button, and it'll delete the footage. Now, a weird thing to keep in mind, uh, now I just noticed this, is that there is not an undo button on this page or anywhere. So just be sure to be uh, decisive and uh, sure with your edits. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to have to start the project over. <laughs> again uh that is definitely uh, an issue that share factory would probably need to fix but yeah there's no undo button so keep that in mind so i have edited the footage to my liking here so i will head back to the main menu or you can head over to the trim clip section now this is similar to split clip in functionality uh, the process is a little different here uh instead of moving a cursor along uh, the timeline we can move the L stick and right stick here uh, to a certain uh, point in the video to create our start point and end point. So for example, in this video, I'm not really doing much in the first half, just sort of practicing. So I will move it to the start of the match where you don't have to see all that. And then at the end here, I just sort of sit around. So I will move it back to when the game just ended right here. 
And then once we are done, we can press the X button to save our changes. So thing to keep in mind for the trim clip functionality is that it only applies to a specific clip. So if you want to trim the start and end points of the whole video, uh, you're going to have to basically trim the start point of the first clip and the end point of the last clip in order to do that. So now that I have split my footage up and trimmed it to the appropriate length, I'm going to move some of the clips around. And to do that, I will use the move clip function right here. This is once again a little different from the other two processes. We use the L1 and R1 buttons on our DualShock 4 controller to move the footage around in front of or in back of the neighboring clip here. So I want this clip in the front. So I will hit L1 and now it is the first piece of footage uh, on the timeline here. Delete clip is basically the same feature you saw in split clip. Uh, we basically just move our cursor over uh, a specific part of footage and we uh, head over here to delete clip and uh, we just delete it. <laughs> Simple as that. Clone clip is another very self-explanatory feature. We basically uh, just move our cursor once again over uh, the piece of footage we want to clone, and we press clone clip, and now we have two of them. <laughs> so the first effects feature I'm going to use will be found once again here in the settings menu, and that is the pan and zoom feature all the way down here at the right end of the screen. And I'm going to use it in this situation to zoom in on this poor guy right here, whiffing on the goal. Uh, so this obviously can be useful for zooming in on certain things you want to emphasize in your video. And you can just pan it, move it around uh, to where you want to zoom it into. So I like it right about there. So I will confirm. And if we play it back, we will see that it now zooms in on that guy completely <laughs> missing the ball. Now to use the rest of the effects here, I will head down to the plus menu thing here. First up in here is the add clip. Uh, this is basically what we did at the start of the video, uh, adding footage in. So if I forgot to add a certain clip, I can just head in there and uh, select however many clips I want to use. I am happy with the footage I have here, so I'm not going to add in anything. Next up, we have add screenshot. This is once again similar to add clip. PlayStation, luckily for us, provides a few uh, just generic uh, screenshots for us to use, uh, including some like moving ones here, like a cloud and a like, fire and stuff. Um, and then we can also use our own clips that we've taken throughout our gameplay history. So I'm gonna add fire right here just to, I don't know, signify this guy getting absolutely burnt up after missing that goal. These screenshots come in at a five second length. Uh, you can obviously edit it down using the uh, trim clip feature here. So we can make it a little bit shorter. You can also make it longer by doing the opposite of what I just did and stretching it out uh, to however long this length is. You can make it as long as it looks like 15 minutes here. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I'll make it three seconds long. So I cut it down now to a more reasonable length. Uh, these screenshots can also be very useful for outros. Um, you just add them at the end of your video. Uh, make it as long as you want. Uh, probably 20 seconds, I think, is how long uh, outros can be, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, you can just add one of these clips, one of these generic ones here, like the uh, eclipse or the clouds or whatever, to the end of your video and then have basically a basic outro. Since YouTube now provides cards that make it easier online to finish outros and stuff like that. So as you can see here, I cut it down to a more reasonable length so it's not as long and overwhelming. Now screenshots are also very useful for outros uh, for your YouTube video. Uh, now that YouTube has a more simplified process online for making outros with the cards and stuff, you can just add a blank image or a screenshot or whatever at the end of the video and just add in the cards later online. So I can do that for this video at the end here. I can head back into the screenshot tab and I will just do this weird trippy cube thing here and I'll add that in to 10 seconds long. Seems just about right. Now if we are going to have an outro in our video, we're probably going to want some music along with that, and we can add that by heading back in here to the effects menu, and then over here to add music. Now luckily for us, PlayStation provides us with a numerous amount of free non-copyrighted songs that we can use for our video here. Now if we are not happy with the free library PlayStation provides us with here, we can always download songs from our computer onto a USB drive and uh, plug it in to our PlayStation 4 and then import from USB in this tab right here. Now I personally love PlayStation's free uh, audio, so I'll just use this uh, generic heavy metal song and I will move it to the end if I can. Now as you can see here, our music is a little bit too long. It um, makes the runtime of the video like another minute or and a half longer uh, and then it bleeds over into the video a little bit. So to fix that, we can head back here to uh, our good old settings menu and we have basically the same features we had before with our uh, footage, just with the music. So we have split music, trim music, move music, and delete music. Now I'm not going to go over these again because obviously these are just the same features I showed you before, but for the sake of this video, I will split the music just so I can get it to the right length. 
fear. So now that I've trimmed it to my liking, I can head back here to the settings menu, and we can go over some of the more basic features. Uh, there's music volume, self-explanatory here. We just have a volume knob right here. We can move up and down. We can prioritize certain clips if we want to. And then we fade in and fade out. And this is basically just the time our music will take to get up to full volume. So I want it to fade in a little bit so our ears aren't blasted right away. So I'll do point three at the start and I'll just have it cut out at the end. So now that we've gotten our groovy music here in at the end of our video uh, for the outro, we can head back in here to the effects menu and we can add some overlays. So the overlays basically consist of stickers, um, themed stickers, <laughs> imported images from a USB, basically the same process as with the music, download images onto your USB drive, plug it into your PS4, and then uh, they should appear in this section right here. Then we have text, uh, we can choose from uh, actually quite a few different fonts here and then we have camera effects so if you want to add some intensity to your video like with the quake or heartbeat or like the focus uh, effects or if you want to make it a little bit more fun like with the stomp or the bounce effects uh, you can do that um, I'll use the quake here just to make it even like more annoying <laughs> So once we've selected our camera special effects, you will see this menu right here. We have the effect duration. So in my case, I just want to make it as long as the one second clip here. So I will just select it as that. And uh, then we have delete the effects. That's pretty self-explanatory. We have the order of the effects. So if we have multiple, uh, we can move them around. So if we have like heartbeat and pulse, uh, if we move heartbeat on top, it'll prioritize the heartbeat effect and it'll show that uh, with more emphasis. Aligning it will make uh, our quake happen more uh, in a certain area. So if we align it to the left, it'll quake from the left side, center, center, to right, to the right side. Settings, uh, that is basically the intensity. Of course, I want to make it really intense, so I'll move it up to 100 here. Opacity is basically the visibility of the icon in the top uh, right corner up there. For some reason, PlayStation thinks that we need to let our audience know that there is a special effect going on with an icon. Um, so the transform and opacity basically let us move that around. I don't want it there, so I'll just make it invisible here. And then transform, you can basically move that icon around if you want to, but I made it invisible, so I'm not even going to bother with that. So now as you can see, uh, that quakes like nuts when the guy misses the goal to emphasize how much of an idiot he is. Um, <laughs> so that was basically the camera effects in a nutshell there. Um, next up we have text. So as you can see here, we have our three different sizes we can choose from and however many fonts we have here. So for the sake of this video, I'll just use let's see, this font and then we can basically just type out whatever we want. So I will type out mood because I can relate to the struggle and then it'll give us a similar screen to all the other uh, overlays and whatever we have our transform which is the size of our text here so moving it around we can use the R stick uh, if we want to make it bigger we can use the uh, R1 button smaller the L1 button uh, if we want to rotate it we can use our uh, R2 button and our L2 button if we want to go to the left and when we want to say we can once again press the X uh, we can head over to opacity again. That is uh, basically the visibility once again. Uh, color, you can change the color of the text if you want to. All right, there we go. Uh, next, we have the text effects. If we want to make our text look extra crazy, um, we can uh, choose one of these. Uh, we can even have it like animated, like with slime or sprinkles or uh, pizza if we want. That's a bunch of DNA. I don't even know what that is. Cheese sprinkles. Uh, I'm gonna choose whatever the flashiest thing is here. All right, so I think this looks good, so I will confirm. We can then head over to text animation. We have three options here. We have beginning, middle, and ending animation. So for the beginning, that's like fade-ins, uh, fly-ins, basically however the text is going to arrive on the screen. So I will have it um, do a little fly-in. <laughs> fly uh, middle is basically what it'll do once it has arrived. So we can have flashy like a marquee rainbow. And then lastly, of course, we have our ending animation, how it's going to leave, um, basically the same as our uh, beginning animation. So I'm just going to roll out. <laughs> uh, we have our duration here once again. Uh, I just want mine for a second here on the screen, so I'll have it like that. If we want to edit the text, we can bring up the screen again to change anything uh, about it here. And then delete text, layer, order, and align are basically the same things as with the uh, camera effects uh, as I showed you before. Next up, we have filters for all the professional photographers out there who love adding tons of filters to their uh, content. And I'm gonna do something really crazy here. Uh, I'll do this like crazy rainbow thing over here. 
here uh, to accentuate this poor guy's helpless situation. Anyways, that's the filters. Uh, back to the effects menu. Lastly, here we have add layout and add transition. So for layout, this is basically how our uh, footage will appear on the screen. Um, I don't know really why you'd want this. Um, if you like want to cut off part of the screen maybe uh, if you want to make like a, a joke that requires half the screen being taken away I guess you could possibly uh, use this um, now I'm thinking to note the theme does carry through to uh, the layout so like I chose the comic theme uh, that translates through to our layout here so we have like little comic booky uh, backgrounds to these once again I don't really know why you'd want that but if you do you have the option to choose that and then finally here we have transitions like I said with the layout this uh, carries over for the theme so we have our comic booky uh, transitions here that you can use to transition between uh, footage and all that and then we have our basic wipes and fades and all that stuff that we can use uh, at the start of videos especially and uh, towards the end so I just added a basic wipe down uh, transition here now a thing to keep in mind when I tried to use some uh, of these shorter pieces of footage here uh, it would not allow me to because of the length so just make sure your piece of footage is long enough to allow for a transition at the beginning or the end. If you want to edit your transition or layout in any way, you can just head back here to the settings menu and into edit transition or layout. So lastly here, I will take a look at the timeline uh, view shortcuts and such. So we have zoom in and out. This basically makes the footage uh, better to edit and more uh, makes it more visible. Uh, zooming out gives us a better uh, picture of uh, how long our footage is and the actual length. Holding down R3 allows us to quickly move through the footage. Uh, this would have been helpful. If I'd known that at the beginning of this video, because uh, I've been using the uh, R stick on its own to move around, which has been really slow. So yeah, if you want to move around really quickly, just hold down R3, and you'll be able to zip around the timeline. It'll also be faster, of course, if you zoom out all the way, and then you can just pretty easily get from one end of the footage to the other. And then lastly here, if you want to view the music you have added to your video, you can press L3 to view the music here. So if I go down here... I press L3, you can see that I've added the outro music down here at the bottom. So once we are done editing our masterpiece, we can now upload it to YouTube or whatever streaming service we use by pressing the triangle button to render our footage. This will take a while. Um, mine isn't really that long. It's taking like an hour. So just be ready to wait a while for your footage to load. So now that our footage has finally rendered out, we can share it directly to YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter from our PlayStation console, or we can share it later, and it'll save to our uh, video um, capture library, or we can upload it later, or download it onto our computer or uh, other device. And then, what do you do with it from there is up to you. You can uh, obviously finish editing with cards and description and stuff on YouTube. You cannot do that on the Share Factory, but other than that, it basically has every possible feature you can think of except for an undo button. <laughs> um, other than the a lack of certain features like the undo button. The Share Factory uh, is basically, I mean, it's the only option on PlayStation 4, but it could be the best possible option. I don't really think PlayStation could do anything better, and I don't think there are any third-party apps on PlayStation that you can use to edit any footage. So, um, you know, it's what you got, but it's it's pretty good. I honestly think you could start your own YouTube channel from your PlayStation 4, only your PlayStation 4, using this and the PlayStation game capture feature. Obviously, if you would want to up your quality, you would move from something other than just the PlayStation 4. But for starters, um, this is actually pretty good considering it's all free so that about does it for today's video if you enjoyed be sure to leave a like um, if you really enjoyed it be sure to subscribe comment down below if you have any other video ideas for the future I will be sure to make any videos any of you suggest and then if you found this helpful be sure to comment down below if you have any thoughts or opinions on the share factory uh, if you have been using it or uh, enjoy it be sure to let me know down in the comments other than that I've been Steven your semi-conference guide and be sure to have a wonderful day